With the rear of our buggy pretty much complete, we'll carry on with the front end and although we've installed our arms and sway bar, it's time for the front CVAs and hub carriers with the EB48 2.1 Bag H. This bag will be similar to Bag F, which included the rear hubs and links, although with a couple of slight differences due to the steering on the front end. But after this bag, we'll almost finish off the front end of the buggy. So in this bag, we have some really nice parts. As with the rear, we have these upgraded CVA kits, as well as the upgraded adjustable Ackerman spindles, previously an optional upgrade, complete with these new spindle arms, which help fine tune corner entry, middle and exit steering response. The front spindle carriers are again finished with precision and ooze high quality. Each is labelled according to whether it fits on the left or right side. Finally, with your grease and thread lock close by, we're ready to get started. Ok, so we'll begin with our spindles and attaching the spindle arms with two 12mm button head screws. Following this, insert a flanged bearing to the front and a larger bearing into the rear. Repeat on the opposite side. Next, we insert the pre-built universal drive shaft, giving it a turn, making sure it's completely free. After which, we can drop on one of the two 17mm wheel hexes onto the axle, making sure to align the holes, and insert a retaining pin. Again, notice the pin has a flat edge in the middle. This needs to be facing outwards, so we can insert a set screw to lock it into place. Remember to apply some thread lock to the set screw, and tighten down. Repeat the same steps for the opposite side. And with that said, our front CBAs and spindles are complete. Both should turn completely freely with no binding whatsoever. We now need to attach our spindle carriers before we install onto the front end assembly. At this point, you will need to decide upon axle height. Stock position is low, so we'll go with that for this build. And to do that, proceed to insert the black spindle sleeve into the top of the spindle and silver in the bottom before covering with the spindle carrier and inserting the black pin into the top and silver into the bottom. Taking note to ensure the flat edge is facing outwards so that a 5mm button head screw, complete with some thread lock applied, can be installed and lock the pins into place. As stated, this is the stock low axle height position. To run with a higher axle height, simply reverse the spindle pin and sleeve, so black on bottom and silver up top. Just ensure you use the same colour spindle and sleeve together. Don't mix the black pin with the silver sleeve for instance, and vice versa. Now we're ready to get this side onto the front assembly. With the block in place on the suspension arm, insert a spindle carrier hinge pin into either side of the arm and into the spindle carrier, ensuring the flat section of each pin is facing outwards. There's a handy flat section on the head indicating where the flat section on the actual pin is facing. And we can now secure these into place using a pair of 5mm button head screws going into the side of the caster block and locking the hinge pins into place. A little thread lock on each set screw as well of course. That's one side complete. Repeat the entire process on the opposite arm, making sure you've replicated the axle height pin and sleeve arrangement before placing into position on the opposite arm, inserting a hinge pin on either side, and securing in place with the final set of set screws, complete with thread lock. The front end is really starting to take shape now. All that's left is to get these front camber links into position, although we need to build them first, so with a little grease on the threads, proceed to screw each turnbuckle into the rod end. These need to have a 41mm gap, so try to be as precise as possible here. With both links created, insert a pivot ball into each rod end, very easy with the Techno Shock tool. I also tend to move the ball around once inserted just to make sure it's relatively free. Remembering that the notch always goes to the left side of the vehicle, line up the camber link on the inside of the buggy with the angled link at the spindle carrier end, before inserting a 22mm capped screw from front to back at either end. Stock position is outer hole on the spindle carrier and inner centre hole on the shock tower. Add an 8mm washer to either screw, 
before inserting the camber link and securing into place with a flanged lock nut. Of course, remember to make sure the dog bone end of the drive shaft is seated within its cup before tightening both screws into flanged lock nuts, just so that they're snug. Repeat on the opposite side with the final camber link. Again, remember notch goes to the left. And with that said, we're done with this kit bag. A quick final check to ensure everything is nice and free, which it is. No reaming or anything else necessary. The redesigned front end for this 2.1 kit is now clear with its new front camber links, as well as new spindle carriers and new spindles. Nevertheless, both front and rear end are at the same stage now. Arms attached, hubs and drive shafts in place, camber links in place, and all nice and smooth. Although we do need to carry on with a few extra parts to the front assembly with our next kit bag, in particular the steering assembly. <laughs> <laughs>